it's time for Go Go Nippon. My first trip to Japan, session eight. Hey guys, let's see if I can get a bit more of this game in tonight. After being interrupted earlier. As long as we're here, let's go to the Ottawa waterfall below. The Ottawa waterfall? Yeah, it's a small waterfall consisting of three narrow streams. The waterfall has existed for over a thousand years. Back then, people said the water would confer wealth or long life. They loved it as the fountain of youth. Hmm, looks like uh, more than one culture has that, which would make sense, of course. The fountain of youth? Okay, let's check it out. Whoa, there really are three trails of water here. Each stream confers its own blessings. From right to left, they confer academic success, health, and love, respectively. Academics, health, and love. So then, starting from the right, I take the water from each and drink it? Okay, let's start with the water of academics. Oh, oh. Now, the water of health, then the water of love. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh, it's delicious. It really could be the Fountain of Youth. I've actually been to the Fountain of Youth in... Um, in St. Augustine, where um, Ponce de Leon went. Huh? Now that I think about it, you guys only drink from the health and low springs. None from the academics one. How come? Uh, well, right. Yes. Well, what? You both look so serious. The truth is, is that anyone greedy enough to try and drink from all three rivers will be denied their blessings. What? Wait, is that true? Yes, I'm sorry to say. No, no, no way! Why didn't you tell me that earlier? Because that would have made it so much less funny. Sorry about that. <laughs> so I didn't earn any blessings today. <sighs> I could have used the blessings. And love, at least. <sighs> so now that I think about it, Okoto and Akira both drank from the love spring. First, the entry fee there. Now, our next Kyoto sightseeing spot is here. Whoa! This is the Kenkakuji. Hmm, so there could be Dera or G. <coughs> Kinkaku. The kin in Kinkaku is a reference to the grand golden color of the temple. The name is actually a nickname. What's its real name? I know it. It's Rokuonji, right? That's right. You really know your stuff, Akira. Hold your applause to the end. I still know lots more about the Ro Rokuonji. Then why don't you tell us about it, Akira? Heh, <laughs> leave it to me. The fact is, there was already a temple here in the 13th century. The noble who commissioned it was put to death for conspiring against the emperor, and it fell into ruin. Yeah, conspiring against emperors doesn't often go well. Then around the end of the 14th century, the shogun Ashikaga Yoshimitsu fixed it up and built a new temple, which he called the Rokonji. Wow, is that really what happened? Yep, she's exactly right. Wait a minute, why are you asking Oni-chan for confirmation? And then, no reason, just wanted to be sure. Hmm, let me tell you, this isn't all I know. I also know that when the temple was completed, the grounds around it were larger, and it was completely burned down once. Burned down? The temple? Was it in a war, or what? Psst, sorry, it burned down just 60 years ago. It was arson. Arson? You mean someone set fire to it? Yep, in 1950, by young monks still in training. A monk committed arson? That's right, the temple was already a famous national treasure at the time, so it caused a huge stir. I see, that makes sense. Then, a world-famous author named Mishima Yukio wrote a novel about it. The name of the novel was, of course, Kinkaku Kinkakuji. Wow, Akira, you really know about a lot about the Kinkakuji. I told you I know a lot about it. So, have you read the novel? N no. Oh dear. 
Mishima and Yukio's Kinkakuji has been translated into many other languages, so you should read it if you get a chance. Sure, I will. He probably wrote it after visiting the place for himself, so it'll probably be more interesting now than if I read it before. I'll be sure to look around for it when I get home. I, I think I might try to read it when I get home, too. Hey, <laughs> I see. I think you would get a lot out of it, Akira. The Kinkakuji, huh? The walls are stuck with gold leaf, so it's as gold as the name suggests. I'd heard that ancient Europe referred to Japan as Jipang, the land of gold. That would explain why we call it Japan instead of Nippon. <coughs> Looking at this, I can see why Marco Polo would have felt that way. What do you think of Kyoto so far? Let's see. At first, I wasn't really seeing the town's history and culture at all. But the more we walk around, the more I feel the traditional atmosphere seeping in all over. That's right. Kyoto has a lot of temples and shrines, so you can walk from temple to temple and shrine to shrine. I wouldn't mind doing that in real life. That'd be kind of fun. Just walking around could give you a deep impression of the town. Yep, that's really true. But how do I say this? It's more than that. There's... Like, even among the smallest shops in town, so many of them sell traditional craft goods, so that also gives me the impression of a town that values its history. That's true. While Kyoto continues to expand, the city as a whole does protect its traditions. I think that's what makes it amazing. Preserving its history while taking in the new, huh? But now that I think about it, I think Tokyo has a similar sort of atmosphere. With Kyoto, it just feels a whole lot sharper. When I think about it that way, Kyoto really is like a representation of Japan itself. Ah, that's it. There's one thing that surprised me in coming to Kyoto. Surprised you? What is it? You know, the language. Language? Ah, I see, because it's not like Tokyo Japanese. That's right, it's um, a dialect, right? The accent and the words that people use here, it's nothing like the Japanese I know. That's true, people in Kyoto and nearby Osaka and Kobe speak what's called Kansai-ben, which is often um, the root of jokes in anime, um, such as, um, shoot, what was the one Dan had me watch recently, where the Osaka girl was kind of crazy. Anyway, <coughs> it's often a joke in anime that doesn't translate over. Kansai-ben. <laughs> yes, specifically, Kobe and Osaka and Kyoto all have their own dialects, but the general term for it is Kansai-ben. Kansai-ben, I see. It's hard for even native Japanese to imitate Kansai-ben. It's a unique way of speaking. I see. But how should I say... It feels like it has nuances that I don't hear in the Japanese of Tokyo. That's true. It's fast-paced and kind of funny. That's right. When you listen to an exchange, it almost sounds like they might be bursting, bursting out laughing. <coughs> Remember what I said before, that Kyoto was the capital of Japan long ago? While that was going on, the city of Osaka was also developing next door. Osaka developed as a merchant city. They based their lives around merchant culture. So I think their language developed around the interaction between a shop owner and customer. Making the customer feel comfortable is so important in the business world. You mean, they make them laugh so they relax and feel more like buying things? It's just my own speculation, but I wonder if it not, might not be true. The real Kansai has done a lot to develop comedians and comedy culture, so you might hear Kansai band on TV too. I've also heard from Giant Bomb and other places that Japanese uh, comedy is quite interesting compared to American comedy. Now that I think about it, it sounds really cute when girls speak it too. Hmm, we don't speak Kansai Ben. Does that mean you don't think we're cute? Th that, that's not it. Th that's not what I was trying to say at all. So you're saying you wish we both spoke Kansai Ben? That's right, exactly. I mean, that's exactly the same complaint. <laughs> Even without speaking Kansai Ben, I think we'd be a good comedy team, don't you? Anyway, let's go to one last place today. It's very close to where we are now. What kind of temple is it this time? Oh my, we're not going to a temple. Really? Then where are we? Ta-da! This is Kyoto's premier entertainment district, Kyong. Wow. Buildings still have an older, refined feeling to them. The 
town of Gion is the gateway to the Yasaka Shrine. It's basically a town that sprang up on the road along the road to the shrine. The name Gion comes from the fact that the Yasaka Shrine was once known as the Gion Shrine. I see. So, is there something on this street? Like what? Well, it's certainly a very beautiful street and has a refined atmosphere. But isn't there like a famous building or? Yeah, there's nothing like that here. But in its place. In its place. Ah, uh, look, they're walking towards us. Walking? Ah! There's a woman walking towards us. Tiny red lips on a face made up in white. And such a beautiful kimono. Is that a high class geisha? Sort of. But geisha is only for Tokyo. In Kyoto, they're called Geiko. I did not know that. Geiko. Yes, and young apprentice Geiko are known as Meiko. She looks young. She's probably Meiko. Ah, she just turned to us and bowed. She's so cute. Huh. Hey, Onichan. I hear back in the day, Meiko girls were around 10 years old. Is that true? That's what they say. 10 years old? They started that young? Yeah, because Meiko and Geiko would play instruments at banquets and sing and dance. They were like flowers used to add life to a party, and men of high standing and rank would come to them. So in order to keep them from offending anyone, they received strict instruction, discipline, and manners from a very young age. That's the kind of system it was. So for all its beauty, their world was a harsh one too. Yes, but these days it's seen as problematic to make children work so hard. Nowadays you can't begin Mako training until you finish school. <coughs> I saw on TV before too. There are fewer and fewer women who have to become Mako these days. I guess that's true in all countries. Jobs that were standard long ago are gradually declining. It's too bad, but... Yeah? Ah, but then the TV said more people want to do it nowadays compared to before. But they say that the training is so strict that many people just up and quit. Just because you want it doesn't mean you'll succeed. But Meiko and Geiko are part of an amazing culture. There must be more people who want to carry it on. That's it, as long as we're here, why don't we call a Geiko-san tonight and... Unfortunately, that's not possible. Huh? Why not? The girl refused first-time customers. Most people have to be referred by an existing customer. I see. There's some exceptions lately. I hear there are some events where you can hire a Geiko for a brief period of time. But it probably takes a lot of money, right? I see. I, I guess that's true. Yeah, I understand that. It was just an idea. When you say it like that, I can tell you're really upset about it. I told you, I was joking. I don't think you were. Anyway, as long as we're here, we should stop by the Yasaka Shrine, then back to our hotel? Okay. <coughs> Ooh. We visited the Yasaka Shrine, which was beautiful. Our hotel might be more humble than the halls where the Geiko perform, but it was still a nice place. The food in Kyoto tastes completely different from the food in Tokyo, too. Kyoto was a nice place, but not at all inferior to Tokyo. Just one day doesn't seem like enough to experience it all. But tomorrow I go back to Tokyo, and in three days' time I go back home. I've got to make the most of Japan in the time I've got left. Go, go, Nippon. Day five. Another beautiful day. They said on the news yesterday it was set to rain in Tokyo. So good weather follow me down. Oh, what was that? So good weather follow me strip should be a good sign of things to come, right? Nah. Okay, day two in Tokyo. Let's get started. Our next destination is a temple called the Ryoanji. Ryoanji. The Ryoanji is a magnificent temple, of course. It has a number of other charms that people visit it. It has other charms? What do you think? Hmm, what could it be? I give up. I have no idea. The answer is... First, the entry fee. There. This is Rock Garden. I think my brothers went here. I think I remember seeing pictures from when Dan and Dave went to Japan, but I'm not sure. Hopefully they'll comment whenever Dan gets to this video. Wait, 
Why are you being so quiet? Oh, sorry, I kind of got sucked in. Anyway, how do I say this? A garden made out of rocks and sand with no trees? It feels kind of empty. And it sounds strange, but when I look at it long enough, it starts to look like an island in the ocean. Wow, that's amazing. Huh? What? What's amazing? This type of garden is called a Kare Sansue. As you say, it symbolizes mountains and water without the use of water. I see. I think you stumbled upon its meaning without realizing it. So, maybe I got a little closer to being Japanese in these few days. Yeah, maybe so. Anyway, who created this garden? It's such a high-level artistry, it must be someone famous, right? <laughs> to tell the truth, no one really knows. Really? Yes, they say it was made sometime in the 15th century, and there are varying theories as to its creator, but no one knows for sure. I see. But that's not the only thing we don't know. Huh? There's another mystery about it? Take a good look. How many stones do you see in the garden? Stones? One, two, three... Are there fourteen in all? That's what it looks like, right? Yeah, but since you asked that, it must mean... Yes, there are actually fifteen stones. Wait, let me count again. One, two, three... Ah, you're right. There's another stone hidden behind that one. The garden was designed so there's only one spot where you can see all fifteen stones at once. Wow! The stoa in the Vatican was built so that the two rings of pillars line up perfectly when you stand at the center of the plaza. This is kind of the opposite effect. The garden itself was built on a slight decline, so the height of the stones in the back walls changed the height from some angles. There are optical illusions like that all over the garden. That's amazing. What a complicated garden. But I could never come up with something so complicated. It feels like it must be imbued with all sorts of deep meaning. Naturally. So, what meanings are hidden in it? You need to figure it out for yourself. That's the meaning of Zen. What? But that's mean. Come on, Aki-chan. Stop teasing him and tell him the truth. Huh? The truth? Eh, sorry. To tell the truth, no one knows the deepest meaning of this garden. Really? Yes, there are many theories, of course, but no one knows which of the theories are really true, and we may never know. I see. Like Aki-chan said, because there is no answer, that means you can think one out for yourself. That part of it really is the meaning of Zen. I know, right? That's why I f f really meant it when I said that. Liar. Hmm? What's with that look? You got something to say? Uh, not at all. Hmm, we've been walking around a lot all day, but... Hmm, there's so much to see in Kyoto. There is, we've only been hitting up the main spots. You can't see it all in a, just a day or two. Anyway, better get out of here before evening. We have time to see about one more place. Which means the next thing will be our last. That's right, and I know just the place for us to go. The place to go? Where is that? Hehe, <laughs> that is. First, the entrance fee. There. Here. Hehe, <laughs> I get it. Th th this is... This is the Uzumasa Movie Village. It's a theme park, a recreation of an Edo period village. Amazing! I never knew this was here. It takes about 30 minutes by train from Kyoto, but I really want to show it to you. I see. These are fairly rare in Japan, but they're quite fun, especially... A recreation of ancient Japan? I see, then this is... Hey, you're in a daze. Huh? Sorry, I just... Don't worry about it. I'm just happy that you seem to be having fun. Yeah, I'm really glad we came here. Thanks. Uh, sure. Hey, she's shy. Oh, Nichan, stop it. You're doing it again. Hey. Ah, that reminds me. You called this a movie village earlier. Ah, originally a lot of Japanese movie companies would film here. Because a lot of movies back then were Jedi Geki. Period films. Usually samurai movies. So most of the Jedi Geki ended up getting filmed here. Then a part of the set was opened for the public to enjoy, which is why it's called the Uzumasa Movie Village. That's right. I see. That's interesting. What's really amazing is they didn't just recreate the surface of the buildings, you can actually walk around and experience the town for yourself. Wow, so what kind of things can you do? Let's see, for instance, there are exhibits about the filming process. Mm-hmm. And you can experience the traditional culture of Kyoto. I see, I see. And there are Jambara shows, too. Which are samurai films. Jambara? And you don't just watch them, they really teach you the Jambara style. <gasps> Whoa! You can really try Jambara? I'm not sure about that, but we can at least do that. That? What's that? 
it's you'll see when we get there that's right so let's go hmm huh? wait is this well what do you want you have to choose actually why don't you choose for us too choose for you me yeah let's do it that way uh okay then let me warn you you better choose seriously I, I know hmm let's see for the two of you I'm ready are you guys still changing well women always take longer to get ready sexist Here we are. Huh? Hmm. Whoa! Ta da! How do you like it? I'm sorry we took so much time. Hmm. Hmm. You guys look so amazing! Yeah, thank you. Hmm. You don't look bad yourself. Really? I really couldn't say. Do I look like a samurai? Yeah, you look like a dashing samurai. Seriously? Yeah, you look like a dashing villainous governor. Yeah, evil governor. Hehehe. <laughs> mean, that's not a compliment at all. Haha, <laughs> took you long enough. Feh. But anyway, I didn't think I'd get to dress up like this. And moreover, yeah, the girls look really amazing. They always look great, but I think I prefer them in the Japanese style clothes. Hmm? What's wrong, Akira? Hmm? I just don't think I can accept this. Can accept what? Picked a princess costume for my sister, so why did you make me a lady samurai? I wanted to be more feminine, like a Mako, or I wouldn't have minded a princess outfit like Oni Chan's either. Well, I just. You just what? I just kind of. Just spit it out already. It's just. Akira is such a happy, active girl. I think this suits her better than princess clothes. Ah. Huh. Right? Don't you think, Makoto? Yes, I do. As her older sister, I also think that outfit brings out her charm a bit more than the others. Hang on a minute here. What do you guys talk about in English? But while I know you're saying it in English so she won't understand, I think you should probably tell her. But I don't know what she'll do to me if I tell her that. Come on, stop leaving me out of the conversation. I don't think it'll be bad. She'll be happy to hear it. Are you sure? I'm sure. Hmm. <laughs> I know you guys are saying bad things about me. We are not. We're complimenting you. You're lying. Hm, fine then. You're saying I look good at pretty things. Come on now, don't pout. Hm. Fine, feeling this governess who entered the conspiracy will face my judgment. Prepare yourself. Let's do this. Huh? Whoa, wait a second. It's dangerous to swing a sword around. Resistance is useless. Ah! Thank you for riding the Shinkansen today. The train will... Just two days. Such a brief two days, but we got so much done. There's so many places we didn't get to. Next time I go to Japan, I'll have to come here again. Farewell, Kyoto. Till we meet again. Hmm? It's awfully quiet right now. What are they? Zzz. Wow, Makoto's already asleep? I guess it's natural after all the walking we did. So, is Akira? Nope, Akira's awake, but... <sighs> What's wrong, Akira? Tired? No, I'm not so tired. Huh? It's no use. What's no use? English. I can't speak it. Oh, oh, that was English just now? I thought she was talking to me in Japanese. What could to be more like Oni-chan? Like Makoto? Yeah, I kind of been thinking about that since I came to Kyoto. Thinking that, I wish I could be more like Oni-chan. Oni-chan's always been so beautiful and kind. She knows everything. She even speaks English. That's amazing. Don't you think so? Oni-chan is amazing. Yeah, she's certainly quite knowledgeable and pretty and good at English. But but remember, she's not as good at cooking as you are, Akira. Well, that's true, but it's not such an important thing. You think so? I think cooking is an amazing skill to have. What? Nothing, thank you. Ah, sure. But even so, I can't really compete with Oni-chan. Oni-chan is... I've always been so proud to have her as a sister. Ever since we were kids. Our relatives always crowd around her. Mako-chan is so cute. Mako-chan is so smart. They always praised her like that. When they did, I felt so happy for her. As if every compliment to her was a compliment to me as well. But it really was her they were complimenting, not me. Kira. 
Ah, but don't mistake me. It's not that I'm Haikandaru or anything. Haikandaru? Ah, you haven't heard of it? How to explain it? I think it's like jealousy, sort of. Oh. Right, yeah, it's not that I'm jealous of Oni-chan or anything. I'm just, sometimes I really hate myself. Hate yourself. I'm back to Oni-chan, I feel so inferior. And the more I think about it, the more I start to hate myself. But that's awful. When I was a kid, my parents recommended that I take English classes with Oni-chan. But I didn't go. I was too afraid of being compared with her. Her sister speaks so well, Akira so poorly. I was afraid they'd say something like that. I don't think that would. Yeah, I know. I guess I'm just being a Hingaru. But even though I know that, I can't help but think it. So I built up this Chiko Keno and got even more sensitive about not speaking English. Chiko Keno? Self loathing? Ah, sorry. Do you know what Chiko Keno means? Ah, right. I think I do. It means you start to hate yourself, right? Yeah, that's right. Akira. Ah, but I wish I had done it. Huh? If I'd just taken the classes, I wouldn't feel frustrated as often as now. I'd be able to talk to you in your native language as Iza Onichan did today. Maybe then I wouldn't have to act so tough and could just. Arino no ma no mune no ura wo arawa ni suru. Uh, look, I'm sorry. Hmm? I just. That thing you said was a little too complicated for me to understand. Ah, you don't have to apologize, just. I guess I was using harder words on purpose. On purpose? Yeah, on purpose. Why? That's a secret. A secret? I really do wish I worked harder on studying English. If I had. Whew. Not long after Akira fell asleep too, and I was left to ponder the real meaning of her words once they woke up. Tadaima. Tadaima. Ooh, I'm beat. Looks like Akira's back to her usual self. We're only away for a day, but it really makes you appreciate the home you've got. I know how you feel. Really? Maybe it's one of those human traits that crosses all cultures then. Anyway, it's gone fast, hasn't it? Hmm? The time since you got here, it's gone by in the blink of an eye. And now you have to go home in two days. Uh, yeah. You'll be heading out early then, won't you? Uh, yeah. I think I have to leave in the morning, probably. I see. Tomorrow will be your last day for sightseeing. Yeah. Is there anything you'd like to see tomorrow? Um, I don't know. I'll have to think about it. I see. It's your last day of sightseeing, so you should really make the most of it. Yeah. That's right. Like Makoto said, tomorrow will be my last day to look around the city. Where should I go tomorrow? No, the thing I should be asking myself isn't where to go. It's who to go with. For my last day of sightseeing, I want... Hey, you up? Hmm? I... It's Akira. Can I come in? Akira? Sh sh sure. Come in. Sorry. I know you must be tired. Uh, no, it's fine. I'm not even in bed yet. I see. Uh, Akira, what could she want this time of night? Um, look, there's something I need to ask you. Sh sure. Um, have you decided, like, where you want to go tomorrow? Not yet. Okay, then, um, do you want to go to Yokohama with me? Go with you? Yeah, to Yokohama. How about it? Um, uh, you don't have to if you don't want to. I don't mind. N not at all. I, I do want to. I, I totally want to. Really? Then, okay, Yokohama, tomorrow. Okay, I've been wanting to see Yokohama. I, I see. That's good. Yeah. Um, so, so anyway, see you tomorrow. Got it, Yokohama, huh? This should be fun. Yeah, anyway, good night. Good night. Whew. I know I said I wanted to go, but honestly, I have no idea what Yokohama is. But I don't mind going at all. Because more than I want to go, it's who I want to go with. Tomorrow. This is my last day to take a trip with Akira. I hope it'll be a good day. Last day. Alright, I think this is a good place to stop for today. Um, thanks for watching. Looks like perhaps tomorrow, depending on how much... Um, 
depending on how much there is left in the game, I might be able to finish it up tomorrow and then move on to my next game. So anyway, thanks for watching. Any amount you can donate um, is for the kids. It helps John Hopkins, the local um, hospital near me. They um, saved my daughter's life twice, as you've probably heard over and over again. So um, any amount you can donate would be great. Uh, but whether you want to donate or not, I just love when people come to the stream and um, and have a chat and so on and so forth. So um, don't feel like uh, you have to donate to come. Just come and watch and chat and have fun. All right, thanks. Bye.